ladies and gentlemen, to another video entitled Pharaoh and his army to hell with diplomacy. And the message a comic hero rises above obstacles and failures in life and generally ends victorious, having contentment, happiness, peace, and joy. Whereas a tragic hero, by his or her great strength, even though he or she may learn from mistakes, ends up the loser because of poetic pride or because the time is too late to reverse the consequences. The story of Pharaoh in Exodus chapters 2, 23 to 14, 31 is a good example of a tragic hero. Pharaoh had repressed God's people in a system of slavery and finally pursues them at the point of God's deliverance and ends up entangling himself and his army in the midst of the sea. The Dilemma The children of Israel are succumbed to slavery in Egypt. Three factors are involved. One, faith. The children of Israel were viewed as a threat to Israel's social and political security because they were increasing rapidly in numbers and wealth. Two, having become slaves, there were economic benefits to the Egypt to Egypt's national income, slave labor being an asset, thus cutting production costs. On the other hand, three, Israel is in a covenant relationship with God, with Yahweh. God called Abraham many years ago and established that covenant. And it which was passed on to Abraham's son Isaac and Isaac's son Jacob and to Jacob's son Joseph who was sold by his brothers and who eventually became governor in Egypt. At that time, the children of Israel from Canaan became citizens in the land of Goshen, Egypt, as a result of a global famine. The good pharaohs have died, and this pharaoh in the story is at the climax of Israel's plot. Yahweh had prophesied earlier that Israel would remain in Egypt for 420 years, subdued to slavery. However, the time has come when the prophecy comes to a termination and Yahweh is ready to deliver the children of Israel, whom he calls my people, according to Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. God sends Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh to announce Israel's departure. And Moses and Aaron declares to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Exodus 5, 1. Such a declaration is reproachful to Pharaoh. The 
Pharaohs of Egypt were gods, deified deities whom the nations worship. This pronouncement of an unknown god who claims the children of Israel sounds ridiculous. Yet, at the same time, intensifies feelings of insecurity in Pharaoh as he asks, Who oh, is the Lord that I should be his voice? I do not know the Lord. Verse 2. A series of drama comes into play as Pharaoh directs his plot towards despair as a means of defending himself and his kingdom, kingdom's allegiance to him by defying the command of Yahweh. Moreover, I will not let Israel go. To demonstrate his defiance, Pharaoh commands that Israel's burden be increased, which heightens as Moses and Aaron continues to plead for Israel. Egypt's probable economic loss of property, Israel being slaves, as well as Pharaoh's religious and political security are embodied in Pharaoh's choice. Notice Pharaoh's accusation and behavior towards Israel. You are I you are idol, you are idol. Therefore you see, let us go to sacrifice to the Lord. Verse chapter 5, verse 17. Pharaoh slams down his anger on Israel's foemen, which is not through anger, by the way, but instead a response to his psychological fears. Go now and work, for no straw shall be given you, yet you shall deliver the same number of bricks. One sees a deliberate effort on Pharaoh's part to protect himself and his nation by forcefully controlling in Israel. Pharaoh, linking idleness to Israel's wanting to sacrifice to the Lord, suggests his mental preoccupation with religious faith. One may assume then that Pharaoh's choice opened him up to a situation of self antagonism. In a series of gaming, with Moses and Aaron, which causes him to harden his heart each time against Pharaoh, against God. The self antagonist causes problems for himself and blames it on others, as we see here in his choice, the strengthening of the tragic hero. According to the movie, The Ten Commandments, 1956, this Pharaoh and Moses grew up together. But Moses was banished when he chose to defend Israel. So there's a 40 year period between him and Pharaoh. And even though Pharaoh despises Moses, he may still have been afraid of his powerful influence. There is nothing in the account that shows that God was fighting with Pharaoh. Moses and Aaron were the prophets, the messengers, who were acting as foreign characters representing the the, the, vis, the vis, which are representation of the visible, larger, um, unseen picture as it relates to Yahweh. What I see God doing is demonstrating His superior deity. 
I will be dead men in Egypt. Pharaoh realizes that Yahweh has the power to annihilate his nation in the sleep of one night. Verse 23. 23. Pharaoh also needs reassurance, which shows his helplessness for the moment. The last part of this summer, and bless me also, is a petition to Moses and Aaron, derived from the subjunctive, the Spanish use of the subjunctive mood, the expression signifies a great desire. Self-realization and pullback. One sees that Pharaoh was brought to the point of submission as a result of his experiences with the plagues and also the tragedy of, his, of the death of his firstborn son. However, Pharaoh's determination to win causes him to propel his mind back to his former hardness of heart, repeating his gaming. And he reminds of the words of Hamlet's uncle in Shakespeare's Hamlet, who stopped praying at the climax of his plot and went out and committed suicide, confessing, my words leap up and my thoughts remain below. Pharaoh decides to reclaim the children of Israel by venturing on a physical pursuit against them. Chapter 14.5 He takes all the chariots, horses, and the army, 49, and hurries off on the pursuit. Pharaoh catches up with Israel in a trap setting. Israel is camping near the Red Sea. Nine. Israel cannot go back. Pharaoh is behind. Neither can Israel go forward. The sea is ahead. It is night. What a morning time. Chapter 14, 10 to 12. Pharaoh feels victorious. His plot looks glorious. As it looks reassuring, it was a coming ending. Pharaoh begins to boast and curse at the same time. He and his army begins to laugh Israel to scorn. They fired threats at Israel when they came in sight of Israel's torches. Pharaoh is overwhelmed with Israel's fearful pack of not being able to escape. When Pharaoh was feeling the highest sense of satisfaction, that Israel was his again, a retrieval of his economic loss, a restoration of his religious and political security, compensation for all of Egypt's losses and sufferings. Bam! Divine intervention comedy stepped in on the scene. Moses waved his rod over the sea. And in a flash of lightning, the sea opens up a road for Israel on this unbed while the water stood up at attention on both sides of the road, like high walls. Woo -hoo! Victory! Victory for Israel! And it reminds of Yahweh's promise in Isaiah 42, 16. I will lead the blind by ways that they have not known, on familiar paths, to unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. Pharaoh and his men are caught up in a blaze of situational irony. They are stupefied. What a devastation of expectancy. Uh, 
will expect such a miracle and such height of triumph. Unbelievable. Pharaoh and his army sees the heads and torches of the children of Israel rushing through the open pathway. Pharaoh nearly bent forward off his chariot from the intense spasmodic jerk he injected into his torch as he makes a final leap to grasp his crashing hope as his flock despairingly looks towards the abyss of death. Pharaoh and his men follows Israel, entering the seabed. But the chariot's wheels begin to sink into the sand, retarding their motion. When the army was satisfied enough that Pharaoh and his army were a good way into the dry sea, he caused Pharaoh's men to petition to Pharaoh deep cries to return from pursuing Israel. But by this time, Pharaoh's brain was crowned with one image ahead, ahead, ahead. The cries were too late. And Yahweh had ordered Moses to wave his hand, his rod again over the solid mass and the solid mass tumbled into a torrential liquid mass again swallowed up Pharaoh and his army to hell with diplomacy. Thank you. 